and welcome back to Dark Side of the Mic. Today we're going back in time to look at two vintage Bear Dynamic M55s that I picked up on eBay for about £25 each. Now these are both omnidirectional dynamic mics that first appeared in the 1960s and were primarily aimed at the hobby taping and filming market. So as you can probably tell, these are not particularly a hi-fi experience. In fact, in the 1974 product catalogue, it described them as being for amateur purposes. That's a nice little reminder of how things have changed over the years. I think if any marketeer had suggested that any product be described that way now, they'd be taken out the back and beaten. Having said that though, I think they're quite possibly the most beautiful looking mics I've ever come across. So while I originally picked these up with a view to modding them with an electric capsule, I was quite interested to hear how they sounded in their stock form. You will often still find these mics in many studios around the world, advertised as part of their kit lists, and are often used for recording harmonicas or even guitar cabs, so they're still widely used to date. Now we're going to jump back and forth between the silver M55 and the black M55 and as you can probably tell they sound quite different from each other. More than that in a second but judging by the boxes it looks like the silver one is the older mic possibly from the 1960s and the black one is packaged in a much more modern design and I'm guessing that's from the 1970s. The capsules themselves have slight differences but as you can see here they more or less look like the same plastic design mounted in the headbasket. Now, these mics are listed as omnidirectional mics, so theoretically they should pick up sound from all around. But I'm finding that while the sound stays fairly consistent from the front of the mic, if I were to take the black M55 just now, and just talk from the side at 90 degrees, you can see there's considerable fall off there. So I would describe them as more a wide-ish cardioid pattern. In their stock form, these mics come hardwired with a DIN connector for those hobby tape machines back in the day. But to make them work with modern equipment, all you need to do is cut off the connector and wire them to an XLR plug. And they work just like any normal dynamic mic. And at the moment I've got these connected to my Mackie VLZ3 mixer and we're giving each mic about 50 to 55 dB of gain. The M55s could be classed as a fairly limited response microphone, despite the specs claiming a range of 70Hz to 16kHz. In practice, it's nowhere near that. As such, they seem to have a fairly prominent mid-emphasis, and I think we can especially hear that in the silver M55. Both of them don't have much in the way of low end, and if we look at the published frequency response from Bayer Dynamic, we can see that it rolls off at around 250 to 300Hz. So that explains that fairly thin sound out the box. Now in terms of the differences between these mics, the black M55 seems to have the fuller response, there's definitely more bite in the high end, while the silver M55 feels much flatter and warmer, and the high end of that mic feels really quite soft, which gives it that extra vintage tone. I did a very basic cine sweep measurement of both of the mics in REW, same levels, gain and position, and here you can see how the black M55 is picking up considerably more in the high end, and also has a slightly wider response out the box. The signal rolls off later in both the high end and stays for longer in the low end. Now whether the differences we're hearing here are the result of manufacturing tolerances or wear and tear over time is anyone's guess. I suspect it's a bit of both. So the question then becomes, can we EQ them to sound a little bit better? So that's what you're hearing now. So I've added a fair bit of low end to both of the mics and I'm pulling down the mids a little bit. And I think that really balances them out quite nicely for spoken word. On the silver M55, I'm adding a bit more in the high end as well, which seems to really open up the sound while still retaining that softness up there. We've also added a bit of compression, and again this helps the dialogue to just cut through that a little bit more, while still retaining the original tone of the mic. Well, that's the aim anyway. So let's read a short passage from the Washington Post coverage of the moon landings in, surprise surprise, 1969. Houston, July 20th. Man stepped out onto the moon tonight for the first time in his two million year history. That's one small step for man declared pioneer astronaut Neil Armstrong at 10.56 Eastern District Time. One giant leap for mankind. Just after that historic moment in man's quest for his origins, Armstrong walked in the dead satellite and found the surface very powdery, littered with fine grains of black dust. A few minutes later, Edwin Buzz Aldrin joined Armstrong on the lunar surface 
and in less than an hour they put on a show that will long be remembered by the worldwide television audience. Okay, so what do you think? Could these be usable for anything or are they just paperweights? Do you have a preference for the silver or the black M55? And which one is the best candidate for modding with an electric capsule? Or should I just keep both of them as is? Let me know in the comments down below. Now these mics aren't going to compete with the modern dynamic sound that we're all used to. But they are out the box kind of funky, fairly articulate and offer an authentic approach to achieving that retro vintage sound without using a lot of effects. In that sense they might be quite handy for a podcast intro or sting uh, where you want that kind of old school vibe. But they do take EQ fairly well, so if you wanted to fatten them out a bit and balance them out, I think they're definitely more than just a really lovely paperweight, but something with a bit of character and personality. And we all know personality goes a long way. Okay, that's it for this week. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.